Welcome to the Oral Health Podcast. Obviously, I don't have Karen with me today, but I've got someone even better. I've got Kia, the founder of Nude Gum. Now, because we're talking about sustainability this week, they were the perfect person to get and come and talk to us about sustainability within oral health because they make fully plant-based chewing gum. And we're going to get into a little bit more about what that means in a second. Thank you, Nude, for coming onto our podcast. If you want to learn more about Nude Gum, then I will leave a link in our description below. Okay, so I am sat here with um, one of the people from Nude who are a completely plant-based chewing gum, and you're going to tell us all about it now. Do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi there, Sophie. Thanks for having me on. Um, My name's Kia, and I'm the founder of Nude, and we make plastic-free, plant-based and biodegradable chewing gum. So yeah, really pleased to be here. Yeah, and especially because we're talking about how oral health can be more sustainable and look after the planet as well as your mouth and I think when people hear plastic free chewing gum we kind of go "Eh? what so can you just talk through what that is and plastic and chewing gum like I don't think people do rent generally know about that yeah it's uh it's a really, really crazy fact, isn't it? And um, it's really the reason that we set the business up in the first place. So um, regular chewing gum, you know, 99% of gum sold across the UK contains a drinking straws worth of plastic hidden within every single piece, Um, which is, yeah, it's madness. We think it's the food industry's dirtiest secret. Um, And at Nude, we're kind of shining a spotlight on that, that secret and trying to get the nation to chew plants rather than plastic. Um, So yeah, all of the plastics are hidden within this proprietary ingredient term called gum base. Um, so if you look at the side of a pack of regular chewing gum, second or third largest ingredient will normally be this this gum base. Um, and because it's a proprietary ingredient, uh, it's legally uh, possible to list it purely as gum base. But actually within gum base, if you unravel it, it contains plastics such as polyethylene, polystyrene, polyvinyl acetate, lots of the same plastics you find in uh, shampoo bottles, carrier bags, even glue. Um, But because these plastics aren't actually listed on the side of pack, consumers, I think 85% of consumers are completely unaware. Um, So yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. And we're, we're trying to solve the problem. Yeah. And it's a problem that I don't think I ever even knew existed like you say it is a quite a dirty secret and um it's obviously harmful for the planet as well if you think people spit their chewing gum out and leave it and it's it all collects and compobulates into a big problem when you add it all up I guess yeah it really does I mean if you think about it lots of other single-use plastic items have actually been banned um the the plastic drinking straw there's now a carrier bag levy um, our view is that in the future, plastic chewing gum will probably go down a sim- similar route. Um, we know chewing gum is really, really important for people. People have a huge appetite to keep their breath fresh on the go, keep their mouth healthy. And actually, the act of chewing gum creates saliva, which you know is really good for kind of neutralizing the plaque acids in your mouth. So we're absolutely not advocating for eradicating chewing gum completely. We just want to get people chewing plants rather than plastic. Um, And you're absolutely right. It it causes a number of different problems. So there's the big kind of um, litter problem that it creates. Plastic gum is stuck to about 90 percent of urban pavements. Um, So it costs the government tens of millions of pounds of taxpayers money to clean up. Um, And it's a job that is done pretty inefficiently and and ineffectively. So that's the litter problem Um, from a kind of environmental problem, even when kind of cleaned up off the streets or responsibly disposed of by the consumer, it's a piece of single use plastic. So wherever it ends up, be it landfill, be it from grinding down into microplastics and ending up in, in water systems, it can actually even re-enter the human food chain via sea life consumption. So there's a big environmental problem associated with single use chewing gum after it's been kind of refused. And then you've got the potential of the human health impact of actually chewing on a piece of plastic. Now, we're very early into the kind of research around this, but we're starting to see microplastics in people's blood, microplastics in breast milk, et cetera. And, you know, we we our view is that it's we're probably not far from some pretty empirical research linking actually chewing plastic to um, bad, bad effects on, on human health. 
So three reasons why we feel quite strongly that that you shouldn't be chewing on plastic um, and, and should chew plants instead. And we've we've done some consumer research around this. And we've recently polled thousands of UK consumers. And some of the findings were really telling. 84% told us that they think it's the responsibility of big gum brands to come clean about their plastic ingredients. Um, and, and actually about 75% said they'd back an outright ban on plastic-based chewing gum. Wow. Uh, so yes, yeah, not an quite, insignificant amount. That's huge. Not at all, no. So some quite compelling um, responses from our from our polling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so talk me through then why you set up Nude. Like how did you discover that this was an issue and then just go, right, we need to do something about it. I want to know about it. Yeah, so I mean, I knew that regular gum was full of kind of other synthetic flavors and sweeteners, um, and and I've been interested in plant based diets for quite a while. So I was looking for a plant based alternative, but like most consumers, had no idea that gum was made of plastic um, until I did some further research and actually found out that the indigenous Americans used to chew on this um, sustainably harvested tree sap called chicle. Uh, which comes from a tree called the sapodilla tree. And in a process very similar to tapping for maple syrup, you can actually kind of cut the bark from this tree without cutting the tree down, extract the sap, harvest the sap, and it has a very similar chewy characteristic to the plastics in regular gum, but is a completely sustainable source, is fully plant-based and is, is biodegradable. So when I kind of found that out, um, that was really the penny drop moment as a genuine alternative to regular chewing gum and that was kind of the inspiration for starting the business mm -hmm. we knew I, th I found out that we chew about five billion pieces of plastic gum in the uk every single year so it's a huge problem but also a huge opportunity as well so our view at nude is that you know if or our view was and we've now solved this if if we could create a gum that looks tastes and chews just like regular chewing gum because as we've just discussed you know chewing gum solves or, or um plays a really important role for consumers on the go in terms of that healthy mouth and fresh breath piece if we could create a piece of gum that looks tastes and chews just like the regular stuff you know we've got a really great opportunity to solve this problem so that's kind of the backstory for setting the business up and you know we, we're really pleased to have kind of done that alongside our manufacturing partner and and um yeah it's absolutely no trade-off now for consumers to actually chew plants instead yeah. of plastic yeah and they are actually really nice gums as well we um we have a few boxes on tap all the time at the foundation because obviously you guys are an accredited product which is part of the reason we're able to sit and have a conversation but the menthol mm. ones I, ha I love the menthol gum that is my favorite I have to say it's always in supply on my desk <laughs> if I'm busy it's doing that, whatever yeah, no. I've always got a piece <laughs> yeah, we have to keep our friends at the oral health foundation well stocked up at all times so um yeah glad you're chewing lots of our menthol gum it's interesting Brits UK chewers are different to any other chewers in the world we're really loyal to our flavors mm. um, so it's interesting that menthol's your flavor most people as I say chew gum for that fresh breath um reason i think it's about 65 percent of chewers chew for fresh breath in the uk which is why mint flavors are so important mint really delivers on that fresh breath piece and we use a couple of tactics that the big gum brands use as well um but using only plant-based ingredients to ensure that our gum really delivers in terms of flavor and and fresh breath and a healthy mouth so um we use a, a fantastic plant-based sugar-free sweetener called xylitol which comes from the bark of birch and beech trees. It tastes really sweet, but actually it's completely calorie free, completely sugar free. Um, and as I say, naturally derived and actually binds onto those plaque acids in your mouth and neutralizes them as you chew. So we've got a really high xylitol content in our gum. We use a, a tactic called micro encapsulation, which is um, injecting small um, amounts of flavor compound actually into the gum base which really aids that flavor longevity. And then we use a trademarked plant-based coolant, um, which stimulates the oral nerve that sends a cooling sensation up to your brain as you chew to really give you that kind of, that real kind of fresh feeling as you chew our gum as well, which is probably why you're such a big fan of the menthol. 
I do love a menthol and I, I won't name any other brands, obviously, but there is one menthol gum that as soon as you bite it, you're like, oh, <laughs> because it's so overpowering. But this is Yeah. nice. It's like it's subtle and it's like you can actually eat it. It doesn't feel like it's going to blow your head off <laughs> when you're chewing it. Well, absolutely. And I think what we found with lots of the big chewing gum brands are that they can taste quite kind of synthetic, whereas you can really taste the the natural menthol and other mint flavors that we put into our gum. It, it really does taste powerful and, and, and delicious. So, yeah, we're really pleased with with the way that the products developed over the last year. Do you see yourself doing any other sort of flavors like fruity ones or um no are you just mint all the way what what do you think We'll, we'll definitely bring out a fruit flavour. Um, as I said, you know, people are really loyal to mint flavours in the UK because fresh breath is such an important reason for chewing. Um, but yes, young chewers particularly love fruit flavours um, and it lends quite nicely to kind of summertime and refreshment and, and enjoyment, I suppose. So, yeah, I think next next year we'll probably look at bringing out a fruit flavour of some some sort and it will add lots of nice colour to the range as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I look forward to that turning up on my desk at some point as well. Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, just if we can talk about obviously your accreditation at the moment, why did you decide to, you know, come and get your product accredited just to say, um, you know, what our accreditation is? It is basically when brands come to us and go, here's my thing. I really want you to let people know it's good for your mouth. And so why why take that extra step if, you know, um because nude is a great gum but why did you want that that seal on it I think it's it's so important for an oral well-being brand to carry the Oral Health Foundation accreditation. I think anything that you're going to put in your mouth or is, you know, potentially used for improving the well-being of, you know, your oral well-being, it, it's it's the seal of approval in the UK, right? Um, and we've had to pass a really rigorous panel of leading dental experts to get your accreditation. So it carries a huge amount of weight for consumers and, and actually for retailers as well that are just looking for that extra kind of bit peace of mind, I suppose, around the, the product quality and the deliverables of the product. So, yeah, it's, it's a, an accreditation that we're incredibly proud to carry. And, um, yeah, here's to a long partnership together. Yeah, absolutely. Are you allowed to say what's what when obviously other brands use the plastic, what do you use instead of plastic or are you not allowed to to disclose that? Yeah, I mean, look, the big brands do a fantastic job of closely guarding exactly what the composition of their product is. Um but we absolutely our, our brand is nude. We're all about kind of being open and honest and transparent. Um, and we use this sustainably harvested chewy tree sap. That's the gum base. Um, so ours is 100% made of this tree sap, um, which is why it's plant-based and biodegradable. We then use six or so other flavors and ingredients, again, all fully plant-based and naturally sugar-free, um, which we kind of um, encapsulate around our around our gum. But yeah, it's the, the key point of difference is instead of this drinking straws worth of plastic, we have... Um, a, a chewy tree sap gum base mm -hmm. and because obviously sustainability um like we have bamboo toothbrushes and things like that which are way better for the planet than using a plastic but bamboo is not uh, it's not in huge supply if we gave everyone a bamboo toothbrush we wouldn't have enough bamboo in the world but so is that that tree sap and stuff sustainable in terms of using it in loads of stuff like if say big brands wanted to switch off from the plastic and use this is is that a way forward do you think or or what other things can maybe people do to to try and steer away from the plastic if say there isn't enough tree sap to to go around or maybe there is I don't I don't know how, yeah, how there's, popular there's, these are <laughs> yeah no we've I mean we've barely scratched the surface in terms of the capacity of this tree sap we're you know we're at well under half a percent usage globally so there's there's a huge amount of upward supply of this product um, and what's amazing about it is because you know as I say in, in a similar way to tapping for maple syrup because we're not cutting the tree down there's an almost endless infinite supply of of this tree sap 
You know, you take this slice out of the bark, you bleed the sap out, but you leave the tree there. It gives intrinsic value to the tree being alive. It provides a, a local economy for the farmers that that harvest the sap. So it's a, a, a never ending stream of sap, which is amazing. Um, and, and another great, great kind of facet to it is that it biodegrades at a similar speed to a banana skin. So once wow. you're finished, once you're finished chewing, you can put your kind of discarded tree sap into your food compost bin a huge huge factor um in terms of carbon emissions so the plastic life cycle by 2030 i think the center for environmental law did a study it's it's set to account for up to um 13 of global carbon emissions so you've got the plastic waste and the litter problems and the potential health problems of chewing this plastic but until we take plastic out of chewing gum it's going to have a an impact on you know, carbon emissions and global warming as well as a, a, a single use plastic. Yeah, I think as well, the point you raised about you don't actually have to cut the tree down to get this sap, you just tap it. And I think that's, that's so important, because not to go into a completely different topic, but deforestation and chopping down trees like willy nilly is a big issue. And mm. if you don't, can get around that, but still have this yeah, supply and it's it's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, we've barely scratched the surface in terms of, you know, the the great things we can talk about with this brand. Chewing gum such an impulsive product and it's such a small amount of pack space that you get to communicate with the consumer. And because there's this huge lack of awareness around the single use plastics hidden in regular gum, we're really single minded as a small challenger brand as to the kind of battles that we can fight at this point. Um, so our focus in terms of our marketing strategy is all around exposing the plastic hidden in big big Which gum we've seen and it's very clever and <laughs> thank yeah, you very much to you. <laughs> yeah. but you know in the future we'd love to talk more about the amazing tree sap that we use and the benefits to the environment of, of things like that and and talk more about xylitol as a great product for oral well-being um so we just have to kind of be as efficient as possible and smart in terms of how we market as a challenger brand but you know watch this space there's lots more to come in terms of some of the other product benefits yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good note to end on. So I will let you get back to your very busy life. Um, congratulations to everyone at Nude. It is fantastic gum. I will say that. Um, so but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been really nice to talk to you. Lovely to speak to you, Sophie. And um, yeah, as soon as the new flavor comes out, we will... I look lots. forward to yeah. getting it in my posts. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. 